In the last episode, we talked about what is the PO injector, and someone leave the comment and asked how to pick up the PO injector. Here we go. The first thing we need to consider is the power budget. I mean, how much power your edge device require. Like this IP camera, usually it will take 10 to 12 watt. It depends on the infrared LED. The more stronger infrared LED, it will need much more power. And for the VoIP phone, it just will take about 7 to 8 watt. And also this access point, it will take 4 to 5 watt. It will be enough. And this is the first PO injector. It can output 30 watt. But that remain power budget is 25 watt. And you may confuse it. Why output 30 watt? It just Remain power budget, the maximum and remain power budget, power budget is 25 watt because they are always power lossing in light. So you don't get 100% power output from the power PO injector, they are always power loss. And I think you will wonder if we output 25 watt, will you too much? I mean, after all, it just need about 12, on 12 watt. Don't worry. All the equipment, it just will take whatever they want. So even you can output 1000 watt, it just will take about 12 watt, no matter how much you, you, you have. But if the out power budget is less than the equipment required, like this one, let's take a look at this one. This big one is PTZ camera. This one is need about 24 watt, it's still enough by using this PO injector because the remain power budget is 25 watt. But if there's heater built in, I mean the heater built into the camera, and the whole power budget will increase to about 40 watt. In that case, this PO injector will be not enough, doesn't supply enough power to supply this equipment. What will happen if we try to use this PO injector to power this PO EMP camera? Don't worry, it will not damage your equipment, but it will keep rebooting. Because they are power handshaking, it will try to classify and verify. When it realize it doesn't improve, provide, it cannot provide enough power, it will just disconnect and make the connect again and disconnect like a dead loop. So in the case, if your PDZ camera like this one have built in the heater, in the case you will need the higher power injector like this one. So this PO injector, it can output 90 watt, and the main power budget is about 70 watt at the end. And for this equipment, you will just have need about 40, so it will be enough. Like again, don't worry, it will not take all the 90 watt, it will just take whatever this equipment requires. Okay, we have talk about the power budget. The second thing is about the speed, right? Like this IP camera and VoIP phone, the 100, 100 megabyte per second speed, the band rate will be enough. And, but for the, like this one, this is the access point. Usually it's just improve the Wi-Fi coverage. So that means we, we, we hope it can provide higher bandwidth, like the, at least 1000 megabyte per second. So, Unfortunately, all these PO injector can provide one, at least 1,000 megabyte per second. But how about this one? This is Netgear SS1. It's the Wi-Fi 6, and the speed is 2,500 2, megabyte per second. If we are using this one, this one only can provide 1,000 megabyte per second. We're going to downgrade the speed. Even your PO, uh, your SS1 can provide higher speed. So in that case, we need to use this one. This PO injector can provide 10,000 megabyte per second speed. So when you use this PO injector to power this access point, the speed will, you will have full speed for this access point. Okay, there's still one more thing. It's, this is the outdoor PO injector. So you can see there's actually also have one input, two output, but there's no power source built in. Like this, all this PO injector, we can use the AC power, but for this one, we cannot use AC power. We need to use the separate power source. This is the power source. It needs to connect to the input of this outdoor PO injector. So why the power source is being separate from the PO injector? The reason is because the outdoor the environment is harsh, especially the temperature. So when we remove the power source from the PO injector, it's going to low down the power temperature inside this PO injector. That's why we say this is the industry grade PO injector. Okay, there's one more thing you really need to know is about the cable. I think you want to know about the cable, right? How to pick the cable to work with the PO injector? The first rule is don't try to use the low cost cable, Ethernet k 5 k 6 Actually, k 5 k 6 is doesn't matter. Just don't use like this one, the low cost one. The reason is 
they're not made of the pure copper, not make 100% copper. Then it will cause the serious power loss during the transmission. The longer the distance, the more power loss will be. So my advice is choose the cable which is made of the pure copper. It doesn't matter K56 or K5, 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 K5E or K56. It depends on the speed. If you are talking about the 1000 megabit per second, then you need to at least you need to choose K56. But if you are talking about the camera or the VIP phone, it doesn't matter. K5E will be totally enough, at least as long as it's made of the pure copper. Okay, there's still one more cable you see. This is the cable with the seal. This is the good idea to choose this kind of cable, but the seal part doesn't relate to the power at all. It's about the surge protection. Because when you have the seal cable, it's going to keep the surge from the internet cable. It's not going to, it will make your device safety, but it doesn't relate to the power source. In the next video, we are going to talk about the surge protection, how to add the surge protection to your PoE system. All right, if you have any question, please post comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. See you next time.